Hello, welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another episode of The Real Housewives of New York City. And this is um, season 15, and this is episode four, and it's called Match Point to No Return. So, um, this review is not gonna be too long. Um, I, I hate to do this, I'm giving it one more episode after this. Um, after episode five, if I don't see improvement, I will be dropping the show. Um, this episode still wasn't that, I mean, it was, it wasn't great. Um, I, it was not good. <laughs> um, I guess my, what I will say is I'll kind of go over everyone and what's going on with them. And then that's pretty much going to be this review. Um, so it's not going to be a very long review and also to, I will state what I think needs to happen when it comes to some of these ladies, if anything. But I think overall, the issue with this group is these ladies are way too aware of the cameras. Um, I feel like I'm not the only reviewer that feels that way. I feel like that is a very obvious problem. Like if you watch it, that is the issue. And it's a lot worse this season than it even was the last, the first season, which I'm not sure how that even happens, but, um, it's not good. And some of these women that are on this show, they're actually just not likable. Like they're <laughs> the the qualities I'm not seeing anything redeeming redeeming. And Bren, that is who I, that's how I feel about her. I'm sorry, but like I don't like her. Um I don't like some of what she said to even Uba. She doesn't realize it. She thinks she's protecting her in her words, but to me, it came, kind of came off as a little bit xenophobic. Um, and I want your opinion. Maybe I'm reaching a little bit. I might be, but at the end of the day, I I think the problem is that I have with Bren is she's a Karen. She is a Karen. Um, there's no maybe about it. She is a Karen. And um, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. But anyway, let's get into the episode. Let me go ahead and just get this done and that'd be that on that. So the episode starts where the ladies play tennis. Um, and I don't like how it even started here, to be honest, because we didn't really see any resolve from the last episode. Um, because where the last episode left off was Uba and Aaron were talking to each other towards the end, but it just sped ahead to like them going to play tennis. I'm going to go play tennis. And um it was a it was an all right seeing there really not mu not much happened there the only thing that really happened with this scene is that bren somehow now is hurt and upset with all the ladies as if she's a victim which i have a huge problem with that she basically is doing similar to what aaron did last season but it's much worse um a lot worse actually um because yeah and then the other thing that i'm noticing is that Raquel, um, we did get a story about Raquel and we found out why Raquel's last name's her last name. And it is a heartfelt, kind of a heartbreaking story about basically her father abandoned her. And um, they decided she, so she does not have neither her mom nor dad's like last name. She found a name in the family lineage and changed her name to that because she wants nothing to do with her dad. And um, this was a touching um, story, and she was talking to Bryn about this. And Bryn did actually seem moved, and this was probably the only time so far this season that Bryn seemed genuine, um, because they do have a very similar story and similar background. Um, from there, um, they do head back to the house, and they decided they're going to do this Shabasana dinner, which is to um, basically kick off... Um, Passover um and because we know that Aaron's Jewish and they're gonna have a dinner so all the ladies are gonna basically cook so um some of the ladies are gonna go on a run to go to the grocery store to get the additional items that are needed and then some of the other ladies are gonna start the cooking process because it's the I guess the theme of the meal is because I don't have a Jewish background but the theme of the meal is to eat until you're married basically eat until you're beyond full and so that's what the, the plan is. And so <clears throat> basically Jessel, Sai, and Uba decide to go to the grocery store 
while some of the ladies st step back and decide to cook. And Bren is basically in her room crying. And I'm actually using air quotes here, stating that she just wants to go home. She wants to go home. She wants to go home. And she talks to Aaron and she's crying about how she wants to go home. And then Aaron consoles her and then she like kind of talks her out of not wanting to go home. And then Jenna checks on her and it's the same thing about how she wants to go home. And my problem is with this whole entire thing is none of this, you would not feel isolated or feel a certain way if you would not act the way you've been acting. And so I guess in the words of the Brooke Ashley fellow YouTuber, you cannot be a villain and victim at the same time. Pick a side and stay there. And <clears throat> for her, she's just, she's making it seem like she's the one who was attacked. And you were not attacked. You were not attacked. Uba yelled at you. Uba called you a snake because you are giving off that energy. And the way Bren is reacting, she's making it sound like Uba called her under, like, called her um, basically everything but a child of God. And Uba didn't do that. She did yell at her, but that's that's pretty much it. And um, I'm, I'm not with it because she's basically doing literally the same thing Aaron did last season. And it does is not what she thinks it looks like. It's not a good look. Anyway, so after basically Aaron consoles her, though, one thing I noticed, I don't know if y'all noticed this, but like when Aaron left the room, her tears, they disappeared. They were there and then they weren't. And I, it just comes off fake. She comes off really, really fake, so I'm not really with it. And this is not, I'm trying to not make this a uh, Bren bashing season, even though I don't care for her. But it, the whole episode, a lot of it is about her. So that's kind of what's happening here. But then anyway, um, then basically they're cooking and um, Jenna is basically flirting with Bren. Bren's flirting with her, that whole weird thing that's happening. And so she was wearing Jenna's jewelry. And Jenna did this to try to cheer her up. And that's pretty much what happened here. Okay, so while this is happening, Jessel, Sai, and Uba are going grocery store shopping, and they decide to play a game at the grocery store asking how much things cost. I was actually beyond educated when it came to this because I go grocery shopping regularly, that's one thing, but I was very curious to know how much groceries cost in the Hamptons <laughs> because, number one, I know the groceries are going to be ridiculous in New York because it's New York. But the Hamptons, I feel like it's going to be a whole nother issue too. And so they did play this game because Jessel kind of made a point saying that she never goes grocery shopping. And also too, then from there, um, they transitioned from this game to then talking about Jessel and her storing, storing her eggs and the decision that she wants to make because she really, really wants to have a girl. And... She doesn't want to have any regret about not even trying. But um, the conversation about surrogacy becomes a thing because of what happened last time. And um, Pavid is kind of, you know, he has reservations. And we actually see a little bit why in this episode, why he would have reservations. And um, basically um sai is just like you know what's the problem why is he has reservations and it's like well because they had the twins back to back and you don't think about this i feel like most people when they say they want to have two kids they always think okay yeah let's have twins and then it's done well you basically have to be financially ready to plan for that because that wasn't their original plan and then also too not only that it is a lot for two parents to then all of a sudden just have to raise two twins, especially two twin boys. Um, very energetic, kind of wild. We've seen them on the show. It's a lot. And if one parent isn't really as present as the other, it can cause issues. And this it, this was alluded, this episode, that this was a thing. Um, and Sai was joking like, look, I'll be your surrogate um, <laughs> because of the cost and everything else. But that's pretty much all that happened with this scene for the most part. Um, because also too, I guess, okay, there's a couple things. Number one, they could just move where they're freezing the eggs at. Because right now she has the eggs at 
in um, Beverly Hills and how much she's paying for it, it's beyond ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> she could store it somewhere else. Like, honestly, I've actually looked into it myself and it's not, it doesn't have to be as expensive as what she said. I think she said it was like 10,000 or something like that a month or something stupid. Um, and it's not, it doesn't have to be that much. Um, I've heard the going rate can be $250 a month. Um, depending on where, and this is for like, um, storing it like in Minnesota. So, and the reason why I know that is because again, I was considering that option for myself just because I've never been 100% sure about not ever having kids, but I know at this point I still don't want to have kids. So <laughs> probably, I'm probably past the point where I should have kids, but I did consider it, especially in like my mid thirties. So anyway, um, and then the other thing I will say, cause I kind of want to wrap Jessel up in a bow is she did say a lot of really, really dumb stuff this episode. And I don't know if it was intentional or what that was about, but that was kind of weird. Um, and then the other thing was she did FaceTime Pavit and Pavit is clearly frustrated with basically having to watch the kids all the time. And he even like, you know, calls her out saying that she sleeps all the time and having the kids say the same thing. And I am hoping, um, you know, watching the show, cause I think I am going to continue to watch the show, even though I'm not liking the show, just to see how things turn up. Um, and I might pick it back up if it gets better at, if it doesn't improve after this next episode, but like, I guess my other critique when it comes to the show is they're focusing on the wrong things. I want to know more what's going on there. I would love to know more what's going on there. Um, and following more of that story and not necessarily just from like Jessel's perspective, because I feel like Jessel's perspective is very delusional. Um, it, it doesn't, it comes off very lavish, very um not realistic um and i feel like she's putting on this front of like i am this expensive girl and it's kind of is the shtick is kind of getting annoying it was cute at first but now it's like okay girl let's let's do less um but anyway that's pretty much how this scene ends side note this episode Sai didn't really give us much this episode and really overall Sai hasn't really been giving us too much um other than really the Sai and Uba duel. Um, and Uba still isn't really giving us much either. And I'm kind of disappointed when it comes to the Sai aspect of things, because even though Sai was super obnoxious last season, her story was interesting. And I wanted to know more about that. Um, and then with Uba, it's still the same thing. And honestly, I found out watching Watch, Watch What Happens Live that we're never going to see her man on camera. So it's just like, if you're not going to open up, I don't understand why she's on this show. Um, especially as a full-time housewife. I'm not understanding that. Um, and then also similar thing with, with um, Jenna. Like, why are you having significant others on the show that are like very, very serious, but yet they're never going to be on the show? Like, if that's what you want to keep private and all that, that's not... That's not it. This You should not have signed up for reality TV. I hate to break it to you, but like, you can't have it both ways. You cannot. I understand you do want to have some privacy, but like, literally, we don't know you. So like, you trying to kind of hold back on your own actual life that helps us get to know who you are as a person that doesn't work and it will not work. So I think that's the other issue that's going on. Um, also, I guess the other thing that happened this episode, um, again, I'm kind of skipping around cause not much happened here. Um, Jenna, um, basically was wearing latex at the dinner and talked about, you know, her time, um, dating a guy and going to basically a sex dungeon in New York city. <laughs> and, um, the lady seemed very overly shocked and weirded out by it. But I was just kind of like, I guess I'm confused why they're shocked because it's New York. I feel like <laughs> of all the places, I don't know. I, I guess I can tell that some of these laser transplants and that's the other thing that I'm just kind of like, what in the heck? Why are you guys sh shocked by some of this stuff that's being said? But anyway, 
that's the other thing that happened. Um, the Shavasana dinner definitely happened. Um, and then the other thing that happened after, after they had the dinner, when they had the dessert that Jenna made was, um, Bryn and Aaron decided to play a prank on the ladies and put roaches, um, fake cockroaches in the dessert. And although it did make things light, it was so stupid. <laughs> and I honestly would have been kind of grossed out because I do not like bugs. And uh, me and Uba, we were on the same page when it came to it. Yeah. 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 When this prank happened, Je the, the fake um, toy roach was like on um, Jessel's like plate. And so she started freaking out. And Uba, because she was slamming that dessert, she thought it was so good. She went immediately to the bathroom and just started like throwing up. It was, she was just totally disturbed by it. And then Sai went to actually go and check up on her. But Sai and I have, we're kind of a similar person. I can't check up on someone who's like throwing up because it actually will make me throw up. And that's literally what happened. So they're both just like projectile. It, it's, it's ridiculous. And so. I kind of did get a good cackle out of that because they're doing this all over Aaron's place and it was Aaron's idea for this prank. So I just love that like the karma came right back around immediately. So I wasn't mad at that at all. Um, besides that, um, that's what happened at the dinner for the most part. They also play the game of Never Have I Ever. Um, and then the other thing that we found out during this dinner is that um, Becky is claims to be jewish like religion wise and practice scientology and i am as confused as um aaron about this it doesn't make any sense so i agree on that um and then as we're talking about oh the other thing that happened which also i'm having issues with jenna when it comes to this season is she made a comment like a um kind of a um we call that um break oh a fourth wall comment she was breaking the fourth wall comment where she was just like because they were talking doing it never have i ever and of course it got sexual where she was like i am not showing this to my son the show the show to my son and i'm just kind of like and this is the problem you are too aware of this being a show you're posturing you're not being yourself i i can't I'm, I'm not with it. And that right there for me, as soon as she said that, it almost was enough for me to just turn off the TV. I was like, why am I even watching this? You're, you just let me know that you're that much aware of this show. So I was kind of over it. Um, the other thing that came off, came out of this show was we did find out that Jenna's engaged, um, because of the big engagement ring. We don't know if she's ever going to get married or not, but again, I partially don't even care anymore what's going on with Jenna because I mean, she's not being herself. So I don't even like, she's too aware of the show. So I don't feel like she's being herself. So I'm just kind of over it. Um, and then the other thing that we found out is Becky is breastfeeding still, and she's planning on bre breastfeeding her kids until they're able to talk. Um, so that also means teeth and all that will be there. And yeah. And she said the last kid that she had, she breastfed them until they were um, three. So yeah, um, we we know that Becky's kind of um, interesting, a little kooky, but like we don't know anything else about her. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know how I feel about that either. Um, but yeah, I think she would be good if the others were good on this show, but I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Um, but anyway. So then the next day happens um, after the dinner. And by the way, they didn't really argue at all, thank God, after this. And the next day, um, we find out that Uba and um, Bryn talked, but we didn't get in any of this on camera. Um, and they made up temporarily. And that didn't last at all because of Bryn being, again, super, super condescending. Um, it started off where Uba is basically being truthful. She's saying how she feels. She's being vulnerable. And I'm so frustrated because Uba even ends up crying at the end of this. 
and Bryn is just being her normal, cold-hearted, condescending self, but she so fills herself too much to this to a point where she can't even receive the fact that she actually is condescending. And the, even the way she reacted to Ubo in, at this moment when it came to all this was indeed condescending. But according to Bryn, pretty much anything that calls her out is name calling. So I don't know what else we can do here. And also too, it was very confusing for me because they were good and then they weren't again, but also because we did not see the conversation. So they're talking about a conversation that happened that wasn't on camera. And I don't understand why they did that. And basically Bryn, it ends off, it ends off bad and they're not good. And we find out though that now, okay, fast forward. Um, basically now we're not gonna, um, Bryn and Uba, they're still that good. So that's how the episode ended. And that's how the episode concluded. I'm sorry if I sound frustrated, um, with this review, but I am because this was not a fun show to watch. I'll be completely honest. Um, again, I'm going to give it one more time. And then after that, then that's going to be it. But anyway, um, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.